intersection of axilla. We have removed the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. These two muscles are forming the anterior wall of the axilla, right? So when you remove these two muscles, we are approaching the axilla from the front, right? Okay, now look here. This is how this pectoral region was, right? So I have reflected pectoralis major like this. And then you find this pectoralis minor that also has been reflected. So what you are seeing now is the axilla. This is the axilla. This is cephalic vein yet not removed here. This deltoid. This is the clavicle. And to that was this origin of pectoralis major that has been cut out. Right. Now what you are seeing all this here. This is the fat in the axilla. These are the branches from the thoracotomelar artery. And now let me remove. There's so much of fat, right? So this fat has to be removed to clear the tissues down below, right? So what I'm doing is getting out the fat and the connective tissue in the axilla. This is to make space for the rest of the structures to be visible. You know what? What is this? This is the axillary vein, right? I had shown you already thoracocrumial trunk. This was thoracocrumial trunk, right? And now you are seeing is the lateral thoracic, lateral thoracic vessels. The veins also, the veins and arteries they accompany each other. They same, they have the na same name, and the nerves here right i'll show you down below in the mid axillary line there is a nerve a long nerve long thoracic nerve or bell right then these are actually the cutaneous branches these are like branches coming from the axilla from the brachial plexus this nerve and reaching into the axilla might be cutaneous branch for the arm okay i think let me guess now this is coming from the second intercostal space you got it so this is this is intercostal brachial nerve intercostal brachial nerve is the continuation of the lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve so there you seeing it coming out and it supplies the skin of the floor of the axilla and it also supplies the skin on the upper mirror side of the arm right so little thoracic vessels this i am slicing out you are seeing it here okay so i have to go further down deep then what you are seeing is here this is what what is this vessel this is the main attribute of axillary vein so this will be subscapular right subscapular vein which also is draining into the axillary vein so what have we have done is like we will be continuously tracing the branches of this axillary vein right and in between can you see this another nerve this nerve running along the needle side of the arm this will be the medial cutaneous nerve of arm or it also can be medial cutaneous nerve of forearm we will find it out later when it when will reach down below right now we just focus upon the axillary vein and so now look here what is this my finger is going down deep inside what is this this is the deep this is the deep fascia of the arm right so I'm going to cut it out so that I can release the structures down below right this is the deep fascia which was actually which was actually compartmentalizing the arm so I'm just tearing it out what I have like reflected now is the fascia.
Okay, now I'm going to show you the axillary vein and its tributaries. Okay, look here now. This you're seeing is the arm, right? And I had shown you the two superficial veins. This was cephalic vein running into this deltopectoral groove, right? So now because pectoralis major has been reflected out. So now you're seeing here, this is the arm which has been resected out, the superficial fascia and the contents. Now you look here, this is cephalic vein running in between the deltoid and the insertion of pectoralis major. This was deltopectoral groove. Pectoralis major has been reflected out. So you can, you can see the cephalic vein and it goes, right? As I told you, it was piercing this clavia pectoral fascia, right, reaching down deep. And then this drains, the cephalic vein drains into the first part of the axillary vein. So this is the axillary vein. Now look here on the medial side of the arm, there was this basilic vein running along the post axial border. This basilic vein, when it reaches above, I told you in the middle of the arm, Basilic vein pierces the deep fascia to become a deep vein and there it receives, you know, the vena committentis. You don't have named veins in the arm. You don't have a brachial vein as such. Rather, you have the vena committentis. You can see the vena committentis. The vena committentis along this, the vena committentis here, the vena committentis here, right? So it's receiving so many vena committentis from the deep veins of the arm and then after crossing the lower border of teres major it continues as axillary vein so this is axillary vein now look here we we the tributaries this one is subscapular vein right this is subscapular vein and there are circumflex humeral vessels circumflex humeral vessels they are running along the, the branches of the axillary artery then there is this you know this first of all there's a very hallmark identifying feature of the axilla whenever you find a nerve coming out from the two roots that means it is median nerve clear cuts right this is the key feature for identifying structures in the axilla so you can clearly see that this is median nerve right so between the two roots of median nerve what passes is the axillary artery but axillary artery axillary artery is down deep inside which i'll go and further dissect deep this is axillary artery but you find that there is a when you comment is a long when you come it along the axillary art you know brachial artery which will continuous brachial artery so these are the veins coming out between the two roots of the median nerve which were running along the brachial artery they also drain here into this axillary vein right and then this is the their lateral thoracic tributaries acromiothoracic superior thoracic right and ultimately when this axillary vein reaches the outer border of the first rib it is called subclavian vein right so remember up till where the cephalic vein is draining this much portion is still the first part of axillary and after that when i'm like reaching my finger here down you can i mean there will be first rib outer border from there it will reach down into the thoracic inlet and that will be subclavian vein <laughs> So, this you see down, you know, behind, you see posteriorly, there is these when a committentis are coming, veins are from the profunda brachial artery, coming from the back of the humerus in the radial groove. So, that's vena committentis which is coming from the profunda brachial artery so you have this as basilic vein and then veins along this profunda brachial artery this one is the vein along the brachial artery all of them link join here to form the axillary and here you see is the subscapular vein right subscapular vein you know is the largest tributary of the longest tributary of the axillary vein just like a subscapular artery also is the largest branch of axillary artery 
so this you know you seen is is running along the lateral border of the scapula right along its length and on the under surface of this muscle here and serratus anterior is running here running along the lateral wall of the chest wall and this subscapularis onto which there is this subscapular vein running and there is this nerve also running if you can appreciate there is this nerve also uh, running along with subscapular vein that sub lower subscapular nerve right running along the length of the this you know this upper palpating is the little border of the scapula so this is lower subscapular nerve and vein and one more thing can you appreciate here that this is also giving a tributary here it's receiving a tributary which is actually you know which is actually piercing this muscle this is teres minor so this pierces teres minor right this vein you are seeing is piercing this muscle teres minor and is reaching onto the dorsum of the scapula so that is you know participating this is circumflex scapular vein this will participate here in the dorsum of the vein a plexus there just like septabular artery also which participates in the anastomosis the back of scapula so similarly are the veins running and of course there are innumerable various unnamed branches reaching along to the length of the scapula right and this dissection has not been done till the back so rest of it i will show you after exposing the back